Gore Chap. I'm with Matco Manufacturing. We try and bring a lot of our product line with us so people have an opportunity to see the whole line. What we're looking at right here in front of us is uh, our older vintage uh, ultralight uh, brakes that most of the airplanes you're talking about up to a 1,320 pound airplane. This is a die cast wheel. Uh, we own the dies on this wheel. Uh, we make it in a 4 inch, a 5 inch, 6 inch and an 8 inch. This is a spun aluminum wheel. That's a CNC spun wheel. Both of these incorporating the same brake technology but different uh, wheel technology. This is an example of a uh, uh, centrifugally cast wheel. We actually do the casting ourselves. It's made in a spinning mold and then uh, machine depending on the wheel up to about 70% uh, machining. All of these brakes are showing internal caliper brakes. We make both an internal and an external. With an internal half of the caliper is inside uh, the wheel. With an external it's completely outside and I'll show you an external over here. But this is showing an external caliper. With an external caliper the caliper grabs the outside of the disc. The nice feature with an external caliper is two bolts and the caliper comes off for reline. Uh, with an internal caliper you remove the wheel to get the caliper off. Uh, this style calip with the caliper outside you end up with a little bit wider package. The internal caliper is going to fit better in a wheel well or a tight wheel pan. We also make a complete line of uh, tail wheels. This is showing both our uh, dual fork tail wheels there and our single fork tail wheel like this. This is a cantilever style. The single fork are available in a 6 inch, 7 inch and 8 inch. Uh, the dual fork, because on a wider tire you need to use a dual fork to keep the tire on the center line, we do a 10 inch and in our wide uh, 11 inch. Other product line is uh, you got to have something to drive the hydraulic brakes. They're all uh, self-adjusting uh, uh, hydraulic system so this is showing a variety of our master cylinders anything from a stick mounted uh, master cylinder to more typical uh, toe brake style or mounted with a lever this style showing uh, with a built-in reservoir this is showing the internals they are all self-adjusting brakes so they got a bypass valve that closes the piston and allows it to stroke and build pressure uh, we sell our own reline kits uh, we're very focused on keeping down the cost of operation of the brakes. You won't find a service center that you have to go to for Matco manufacturing. You can do all the maintenance yourself. It's very easy. We offer either a reline kit where you drill and reline the product yourself, or we offer what's called a swift line where the lining is actually mounted on the brake shoe. It's ready to install. When you install that, you send your old shoes back to us and we can reline them for 20% less than the cost of the reline kit. This is our larger wheels. Uh, this is a rather unique system. This is what's called a uh, multi-stage brake, so there's actually two rotors in there. It's a very high torque package, high energy, and a small envelope. This was the wheel and brake that was certified for use on the Seawind, uh, which is not in production. Uh, this is an example of an internal caliper, a real high energy package, very common on the Velocity. Some of the Aerocomps use them. Um, it's available in a variety of, of energy sizes. This is a standard size. This is a higher size where it's got more mass in the disc. This is an example of our six inch. This is a new product for us. Inch and a half tapered roller bearing with uh, external caliper. That's a 3,000 uh, inch pound torque capacity. This is a uh, hydraulic simulator. which should come around behind me here. What it demonstrates is how important pedal geometry is to making the brakes function properly. We've got two pedals set up here. The one on the left side uh, has got good pedal geometry. The one on the right side is not so good. What I'll do here is I'll set the parking brake valve. I'll cover these up. I'm going to apply equal force to both sides. Take my foot off. What you see is this side has got uh, 450 psi. The lines are expanding slightly. There's 450 psi in there and just about 200 psi in this side. And the difference is the pedal geometry. We say you have to have a two and a half to one mechanical advantage. That's the distance from the pivot point to where the load is applied, divided by the distance from that same pivot point to the center line of the master cylinder. So on this side, it's two and a half to one, and I can easily get the rate at 450 psi. On this side, it's only about one to one, and it's very hard to get to even 200 psi without putting considerable load on my seat back. This also demonstrates the park brake valve. The importance of a park brake valve is it's not a shutoff valve, it's a resettable check valve. So in this position, I'm able to get pressure through to the brake and come back. Once I move it to the closed position, it becomes a check valve. I apply pressure, it traps the fluid in the brake and holds the pressure. 
The difference between this and a shutoff valve, if you use a shutoff valve, when it's in the off position, you can't get pressure to the brake. With a check valve, there's no position that you can put this in where you can't always get uh, your brakes to operate properly. Also on here is demonstrating our uh, hand brake and also a single-sided park brake where you can do the same thing and trap pressure in your brake. Brake. This is a wheel and brake that was used on Spaceship One. It was specifically designed for uh, their application. They were using the, uh, oh yeah, and this is our picture here that was signed by Mike Melville, thanking us for the great work that we did on it. But the thing that was unique on this, uh, they went through a lot of calculations to uh, minimize the weight uh, involved in the wheel and the brake. And the way you do that is you get very specific about the energy that's required. This brake was not used to stop the airplane. The airplane was actually stopped by a piece of wood dragging on the runway. What they used our brake for was steering. So they did some estimations of how many turns they were going to have to do while landing and then gave us a specific energy target and then we machined the caliper, uh, profiled it so that they got exactly that energy capacity and no more. The thing that that did for them was save them about a pound and a half uh, on the air, on, per side on the airplane. Uh, and on that first flight, when they actually made it into space, uh, they calculated that they made it to that altitude by less than a pound. So all of that work that they did uh, was very important. At the time, we were producing uh, an aluminum axle nut and a steel axle nut. They actually called us back after they received it, because they hadn't specified one or the other, and asked us uh, if we made that axle nut in aluminum or steel. And we said, yeah. And they said, well, we need the aluminum one, because weight is very important for us. So. Uh, it was, a, it was a really fun project and we, we really enjoyed being on it. You can find us online at www.matcomfg.com or of course you can always call us 801-335-0582 during business hours you're always going to get a human that answers the phone.